protective arm uh, and limb. So it's um, it's not necessarily the case in that that situation. We have we have probably most of our quadriplegics, however, are driving. Okay. So because you can they actually set up a little more gear can, there. We can set them up so that they can steer the boat appropriately, and. Uh, and have good control of the helm, primarily by staying on one side of the boat in their chair or in the middle, right. and um, maintain an ability to, you know, correctly steer the course. Okay. So you don't see too many quadriplegics trying to do anything in the in the front positions in the gotcha. boat. Gotcha. Now, these guys are extremely creative. They are very. Creative. They are absolutely fantastic. They come up with some amazing things, um, the, especially the quadriplegics, to help them figure out different ways that they can can drive the boat. And she's going to move up to the next position? Correct. She's going to move up to the main sheet trimmer position. And we're going to have her do our main sheet test. And, and primarily, the goal of this is to see if she can, how quickly she can use hand over hand to uh, bring the main sheet in. Dr. Charles Simpson is the one who is leaning on the boom so kindly, providing resistance. <laughs> who is He's also expertise to work. Exactly. He is also a neurologist, uh, retired from Canada, and is an international classifier. And Dr. Jurgen Schwitter uh, is our other assistant here, mm -hmm. who is a German physician, who is a rehab specialist also, and. Uh, then Dr. Peter Van Anholt, who is a physiatrist like myself, is the other international classifier. They all have a lot of training in working with people with disabilities, with functional adaptations, and with sports medicine. Gotcha. So, and we're all sailors. Right. Well, that's so that's, the, that's the other key, is we all sail. This is the jib test. So what we try to do is have her uh, just tack the boat, for instance, from one side of the other, and we are looking in, in this situation, we're looking to see how she does in her cleating. And there being timed. At this point. And in her sheeting, mm -hmm. exactly, and, and in her transferring. So we're actually observing transferring in multiple situations. Now, She's pretty the, good at that one. she is pretty good at that one. The, uh, the jib test is actually um, done on a bungee cord so that we have a little resistance. And uh, the International Foundation for Disabled Sailing has been organized for over 10 years. Um, but the, the sport itself has grown tremendously, yeah. especially in the United States. It, it, has, it has just continued to just climb. So you're going to take all these evaluations and you have uh, uh, criteria for each one and then you're going to come up with a number. Right. And then, and then you have a combination of numbers that go into the boat. Right. And then explain that to us. Uh, the point in doing this is to show that, for instance, we don't have three below knee amputees, all with seven points each on the one to seven scale, right. racing together, because they would have a much easier time from a disability standpoint out on the water than three quadriplegics together, each rated one. Mm -hmm. So the system has been combined and actually voted on by all the national authorities so that they came up with a number of 14, saying that that's our combined point total. We want, don't want any more than 14 points per boat. So if our skipper is a one right. and our middleman's a seven, then we can't have any more than 14 points. So we've got eight total. The other guy has to be six or lower. I got it. So the lower the number, the more severely disabled. Correct. The lower the number, the more severely disabled. And, and she will probably be a one after this evaluation because on our numbering system that's that's where she will probably fall with the most quadriplegics who are ones uh -huh. and uh most below knee amputees for instance are sevens okay so so because they have a wide range of mobility right yeah. they can do quite a bit pretty of much do everything. pretty much do everything that, that any able-bodied person can do so instead of having a, a a handicapping system you just just make sure that everybody's numbers are equal we try to put them all on, a, on an even playing field it's uh so I guess it's a little similar to a PHRF rating system, mm -hmm. but uh, we're just trying to make it fair for everyone and allow the different disabilities to sail together, right. or the people with different disabilities sure. to sail together. Sure. We really, really appreciate you oh, taking the time to talk uh, about it's No that. problem. And, and the, the, the work that you're doing is fantastic. Well, thank you and, very and much. To have everybody, you know, I think everybody should go sailing. And well, absolutely. You're, you're making it so everybody can. Welcome all comers for help if anyone's interested in assisting and, us. And all comers for sailing. And all comers for sailing. So come on out and sail with us. And there's lots of great coaching going on. And get in a boat and have a good time. Take the pressure off. Let the boat coast up towards the breeze a little bit. 
you get a lot of helm, just tell your team. I need, you know, ease a little bit to me. They can ease, ease, the, ease the knees to out a little bit, and then the bow will come flat. As soon as the bow comes flat, you trim back in for power, okay? Once they're set, they become like all sailors and have the freedom of the sea. We were lucky enough to be allowed to join Betsy Allison for the race. Betsy is a five-time Rolex Sailor of the Year, but she is, perhaps more importantly, also the coach of the disabled team. So, Betsy, how did, how did you get involved in coaching these guys? Um, back in 1998, the Disabled World Championships were in Newport, Rhode Island, and uh, seeing that I lived there, I was contacted by the chairman of the Sailors and Special Needs Committee, Hugh Elliott, that I used to race lasers against before his injury. And, uh, and we... Uh, asked me to come on board to coach our, our U.S. disabled sailing team at the world, and um, I agreed to do that. And our guys won a gold and silver medal at that world championship, and ever since then, I uh, stuck around and... You got hooked. I got hooked. And they're a great group of uh, people to work with. Woo! A little puff. It must be a little disconcerting when you're stuck Put in there. Back, stay on! Now, putting the back stay on, bends the mast, flattens the sail. Yeah, twists the upper part of the, uh, it bends the mast, flattens out the mainsail a little bit. Rick, do you have any puller on? Check out this guy next, Roger Dodger. All right, I'm going to look at your setup. A little bit of Ghibli. of the puff patterns as they come down. Right. And everything is small controlled in a very confined area. 15, 10, 9, 8. Yeah, they got to duck back. 7, 6, 5. Louis over. 3, 2, 1. Yep. Individual recall is that X. Oh, he's got to keep clear. He's got to come back. Yeah, I don't know whether Rick was over or not, but certainly the Dubo was. And Rick's not sure either. He's coming back, though. He's clear. Okay, you're clear. He was over. He was over, and now he dipped that X flag, saying that he has recrossed re the line. And now the flag will come down from Thank you. 